While many Christian denominations take no stance on or openly acknowledge and allow Freemasonry, some are outwardly opposed to it, and either discourage or outright prohibit their members from joining the fraternity. Catholic Church The Roman Catholic Church has been among the most persistent critics of Freemasonry. The Church has prohibited its members from being Freemasons since in Eminenti Apostolatus in 1738. Since then, the Vatican has issued several papal bulls banning membership of Catholics from Freemasonry under threat of excommunication. In 1983, the canon law was changed to read. A person who joins an association which plots against the Church is to be punished with a just penalty, however, a person who promotes or directs an association of this kind is to be punished with an interdict," thus eliminating the penalty of excommunication for Masons. Joseph Ratzinger, who later became Pope Benedict XVI, wrote in a letter that those who enroll in Masonic associations are in a state of grave sin and may not receive Holy Communion. The penalty of excommunication is not declared in the current Code of Canon Law, but membership remains forbidden. However, the letter does not form part of canon law and during his tenure Benedict XVI did not make any attempt to change canon law to explicitly mention the ban on Freemasonry. The Catholic Church argues that the philosophy of French Freemasonry the Grand Orient, not the dominant variety of Freemasonry or the branch that is active in the English-speaking world is antithetical to Christian doctrine and that it is at many times and places anti-clerical in intent. The 1913 Catholic Encyclopedia argued that some of the ceremonial in the Scottish Rite is anti Catholic. However, this claim does not appear in subsequent editions. The Masonic use of biblical imagery was seen in the 1913 Catholic Encyclopedia as being done in such a way as to deny the revelation of Christianity. However, this complaint was not included in subsequent editions. From the earliest pontifical documents on the subject, and in particular in the encyclical Humanum Genus by Pope Leo XIII, the 20th of April 1884, the Magisterium of the Church, which may not change, has denounced in Freemasonry philosophical ideas and moral conceptions opposed to Catholic doctrine. For Leo XIII, author of the Inspired Exorcism. They essentially led back to a rationalistic naturalism, the inspiration of its plans and activities against the Church. Topic. Catholic ban on Freemasonry since the Second Vatican Council In 1974 Cardinal Franjo Sieper, prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, sent a letter which seemed to relax the previous absolute ban on Freemasonry which caused confusion and led many Catholics to become Freemasons. In 1981, the Congregation clarified this stance in a letter to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, entitled Clarification Concerning Status of Catholics Becoming Freemasons which said the private letter of 1974, on becoming public, had given rise to erroneous and tendentious interpretations, and affirming that the prohibition against Catholics joining Masonic orders remained. In 1983, the Church revised the Code of Canon Law in a way that did not mention Freemasonry directly causing some Freemasons to claim that the ban on Catholics becoming Freemasons may have been lifted, although the ban was reaffirmed in the same year by the Vatican. In 2000 a letter written by Father Thomas Anslow, a judicial vicar, indicated a more permissive attitude, although this was retracted by Anslow in 2002 because the analysis was faulty. Allegations of deism One of the persistent Catholic criticisms of Freemasonry is that it advocates a deist or naturalist view of creation. Whilst it is recognized that Masonry is not atheistic UGLE aligned Masons are asked if they believe in God or in some jurisdictions a supreme being before joining, and only accept candidates that do, its use of the expression, supreme architect of the universe. A term attributed to the Protestant theologian John Calvin is seen by some Christian critics as indicating deism, although Calvin was not a deist, the belief that God created the universe but did not intervene in the world after this. This was a not uncommon belief, which Catholics viewed as heresy, that arose in the Enlightenment. As a counter-argument, Freemasonry contends that supreme architect is a neutral term acceptable to all, regardless of sect or denomination. It merely reflects the fraternity's desire to bring together members of all deity-based religions, by not using any one specific religion's term for their supreme being. 
A specific charge made in the 1913 Catholic Encyclopedia against Freemasonry is that the introduction of speculative masonry in the early 18th century specifically aimed at «de-Christianizing» the old operative masonry lodges. However, this charge was dropped from subsequent editions. Whereas the constitutions of previous lodges of operative masonry stated that «the first charge is this that you be true to God and Holy Church and use no error or heresy». In 1723 the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of England A mason is obliged by his tenure, to obey the moral law, and if he rightly understands the art, he will never be a stupid atheist nor an irreligious libertine. But although in ancient times masons were charged in every country to be of the religion of that country or nation, whatever it was, yet tis now thought more expedient only to oblige them to that religion in which all men agree, leaving their particular opinions to themselves, that is, to be good men and true, or men of honor and honesty, by whatever denominations or persuasions they may be distinguished, whereby masonry becomes the center of union, and the means of conciliating true friendship among persons that must have remained at a perpetual distance. This change is construed by the Catholic Church as moving towards a deistic view. Topic: <inaudible> Separation of church and state. American Freemasons are consistent advocates of the freedom of religion as found in the 1st Amendment of the US Constitution. The idea that the establishment clause means a strict separation of church and state is interpreted by the Catholic Church as a veiled attack on its place in public life. Well into the 19th century, the papacy continued to assert a divinely ordained right to appoint civil rulers and depose them. It called opposition to this principle, religious indifferentism, by which no religion was acknowledged as true or revealed. And it rightly saw Freemasonry as a leader in the cause of popular sovereignty. This reference is not present, however, in later versions of the encyclopedia. Some specific areas which Freemasons were accused of aiming for an improper separation of church and state were Compulsory state-supported secular education in Italy in 1882 which entailed a prohibition on religious education and also the fact that religious houses were suppressed, the goods of the church confiscated, marriages contracted in despite of the laws and without the rights of the church. The introduction of civil marriage in Mexico in 1857 Topic. Religious indifference Catholic critics of Freemasonry observe that it refuses to promote one faith as being superior to any others, while at the same time it also uses religious-type rituals. That combination is seen as inculcating an indifference to religion. The Masonic author Mackey called Freemasonry, a science which is engaged in the search after the divine truth. Anderson's Ancient Charges of a Freemason, 1723, says of Freemasons, that it is "...expedient only to oblige them to that religion in which all men agree, leaving their particular opinions to themselves." Freemasons reply that not obliging a member to profess a certain religious viewpoint as a condition of membership is not the equivalent of asserting that no religion can be superior to any other. Personal theological beliefs are not to be discussed in the Lodge, thus avoiding arguments with those holding different beliefs. It has been suggested that this ban on religious discussion was especially important in 18th century England where a civil war, in part caused by religious conflict, had only recently ended. <laughs> Protestantism Although many Protestant denominations do not prohibit or discourage their members from joining Masonic lodges and have not issued any position papers condemning Freemasonry, other churches have formally opposed Masonry and spoken of the problems they see with Christians belonging to Masonic lodges. Topic: <laughs> Opposing stance. There is a range of intensity among those Protestant denominations which discourage their congregants from joining Masonic lodges. Most of these denominations tend to be either Evangelical Protestant or other Neo-Protestant. Denominations that, in some form or other, discourage membership of Freemasons include the small Evangelical Lutheran Synod, to larger Protestant church bodies. 
Among Protestants opposed to Freemasonry are the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, the Church of the Nazarene, the Salvation Army, Mennonites, the North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, Christian Reformed Church in North America, Church of the Brethren, Assemblies of God, Society of Friends, Quakers, Free Methodist Church, Seventh Day Adventist Church, Orthodox Presbyterian Church, Free Church of Scotland, Baptist Union of Great Britain and Ireland, Presbyterian Church in America. America, Reformed Presbyterian Church of Ireland. Most of these condemnations resulted from the work of church committees appointed only in recent decades. Many of these Protestant condemnations have never been enforced. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Neutral stance or no position. In some instances, these are relatively small church bodies which broke from the mainline Protestant denominations in recent decades, citing as their reason their opposition to theological liberalism or diversity. The largest by far of the Lutheran, Presbyterian, and Methodist church bodies in the U.S. have not taken a stand against Freemasonry, and many Masons are active members of them. The largest of the Anglican churches in the U.S., the Episcopal Church, has taken no stance against Masonry, nor have the various smaller continuing Anglican and independent Anglican church bodies. The Church of England does not have a clear stance on the matter. In July 1987, the General Synod endorsed a report which considered the compatibility of Freemasonry and Christianity. The report stated, the reflections of the working group itself reveal understandable differences of opinion between those who are Freemasons and those who are not. Whilst the former fully agree that the report shows that there are clear difficulties to be faced by Christians who are Freemasons, the latter are of the mind that the report points to a number of very fundamental reasons to question the compatibility of Freemasonry and Christianity. The Church of Scotland does not ban congregants from becoming Freemasons, but in 1989 the General Assembly said there were very real theological difficulties with Church of Scotland members being Freemasons. The 1985 Conference of the Methodist Church of Great Britain said that Freemasonry competed with Christian beliefs, discouraged but did not prohibit Methodists from becoming Freemasons and asked Methodist Freemasons to reconsider their membership of Freemasonry. The conference banned the use of Methodist premises for Masonic meetings, though a 1989 source reported some Masonic meetings were taking place on Methodist premises. The 1996 Methodist Conference revisited the 1985 position in the light of developments in Freemasonry, concluding that there were still hesitations about the wisdom of a Methodist joining a Masonic lodge, though it affirmed there was no absolute bar on a Methodist being a Freemason. The 1996 conference stated there were unresolved concerns relating to openness of Freemasonry and compatibility of Masonic practice with Christian doctrine despite positive changes that have taken place within Freemasonry in recent years. The 1985 ban on the use of Methodist premises for Masonic meetings remained in place following the 1996 discussions. The Southern Baptist Convention is mistakenly understood to prohibit Freemasonry, but leaves such as a matter of individual conscience, largely due to the findings within the SBC 1993 report on Freemasonry, in which it states, in light of the fact that many tenets and teachings of Freemasonry are not compatible with Christianity and Southern Baptist doctrine, while others are compatible with Christianity and Southern Baptist doctrine, we therefore recommend that consistent with our denomination's deep convictions regarding the priesthood of the believer and the autonomy of the local church, membership in a Masonic order be a matter of personal conscience. Therefore, we exhort Southern Baptists to prayerfully and carefully evaluate Freemasonry in the light of the Lordship of Christ, the teachings of the Scripture, and the findings of this report, as led by the Holy Spirit of God. Topic. Approving stance and acknowledgement Many historical, traditional, and mainline Protestant denominations in mainland Europe officially do not prohibit Freemasonry. An example is the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Northern Germany, a member church of the Evangelical Church in Germany. It recognizes Freemasons among its members and sometimes the Masons hold public ceremonies in the historic St. Michael's Church, Hamburg. Eastern Orthodoxy 
The majority of Orthodox churches have not condemned or supported Freemasonry. In 1933, the Synod of the Church of Greece condemned Freemasonry, forbade all clerics to be members of it, and demanded that church members break all relations with Freemasonry. In 1937, a condemnation was declared by the Church of Romania, and in the 1950s by the Orthodox Church in America and the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia. According to the website of the Orthodox Church in America, "...it is forbidden for an Orthodox Christian to be a member of the Masonic Fraternity because many of its teachings stand in direct conflict with those of Orthodox Christianity." According to scholar Jean-François Var, several ecumenical patriarchs of Constantinople, most famously Athenagoras, were Freemasons. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints LDS Church has a long-standing policy of maintaining no official position on Freemasonry. However, some people see links between the two movements in practice, structure, and symbolism, which go back to the Church's origins. Although the impact of Freemasonry in LDS Church doctrine is the subject of intense debate, it is known that Joseph Smith Sr. the father of the Church's founder and first president, Joseph Smith Jr., became a Freemason in 1816. The Prophet likewise became a Freemason in 1842 when the Church was headquartered in Novu, Illinois. He and hundreds of his followers, including his first four successors as church president, all became Freemasons. Shortly after becoming a Freemason, Smith introduced the church's temple endowment ceremony, which contained some symbols and language closely paralleling some of the rituals of Freemasonry. When the church relocated to Utah in 1847 after Smith's murder, Brigham Young was unsuccessful in establishing Masonic lodges in the territory of Utah. This was due to several factors, but the Church's practice of polygamy and the strong anti-Mormon sentiment of the era greatly contributed. Distrust between members of the Church and Masons grew throughout the second half of the 1800s. Many Freemasons who were not members of the Church harbored strong anti-Mormon sentiments that started in Novu. Soon after Smith and his followers were initiated, the Grand Lodge of Illinois was compelled to revoke the charters of several predominantly Latter-day Saint lodges due to anti-Mormon sentiment and rumors of irregularities. Later, in 1872, the Grand Lodge of Utah was formed and immediately implemented an anti-Mormon policy prohibiting members of the Church from become Masons or from associating with Utah lodges from out of state. The Church also began discouraging its members from joining any oath-bound fraternities or secret societies without naming freemasonry specifically eventually codifying it in the church handbook of instructions in 1984 the grand lodge of utah and church leadership under president spencer w kimball mutually agreed to drop their antagonistic positions the grand lodge of utah rescinded its ban on members of the church and the church removed language from the church handbook of instructions that discouraged members from joining oath bound fraternities the Encyclopedia of Mormonism, a quasi-official 1992 publication of the Church, clarified the Church's position by stating that, "...the philosophy and major tenets of Freemasonry are not fundamentally incompatible with the teaching, theology, and doctrines of the Latter-day Saints." Unlike many American Christian churches in the 21st century, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has not taken an anti-Masonic position. Although some lingering suspicion continues on both sides, there is no formal barrier preventing a male from being both a member of the church and a mason, and many have elected to do so. In 2008, Glenn Cook, a practicing Latter-day Saint, was made the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Utah. Another prominent Latter-day Saint Freemason is Mark E. Coltco Rivera who has authored a popular and accessible introduction to Freemasonry entitled Freemasonry, an Introduction. Topic. New religion Freemasonry unambiguously states that it is not a religion, nor a substitute for religion. There is no separate Masonic God, nor is there a separate proper name for a deity in any branch of Freemasonry. In keeping with the geometrical and architectural theme of Freemasonry, the supreme being is referred to in Masonic ritual by the attributes of Great Architect of the Universe sometimes abbreviated as GAOTU, Grand Geometer or something similar. 
Freemasons use these varied forms of address to make clear that the reference is generic, not about any one religion's particular identification of God. Nevertheless, the same Freemasonry that is criticized as deistic is also criticized for allegedly being a substitute for Christian belief. For example, the New Catholic Encyclopedia states the opinion that, "...Freemasonry displays all the elements of religion, and as such it becomes a rival to the religion of the Gospel. It includes temples and altars, prayers, a moral code, worship, vestments, feast days, the promise of reward or punishment in the afterlife, a hierarchy, an initiation and burial rites." Links to esotericism Certain types of Freemasonry, most notably the Swedish Rite are said to be connected to esoteric Christianity, which holds that Orthodox Christian doctrine is for the duller masses and that real Christianity holds the secret knowledge concerning the sacrifice of Christ on Golgotha. Pre-Christian pagan influences The 1917 edition of the Catholic Encyclopedia says that the Masonic authors Clavel, Ragnon, Pike and Mackey claim Masonic symbolism is rooted in the solar and phallic worship of pre-Christian mystery religion, particularly Egyptian religion. <laughs> Rosicrucian influences The Rosicrucian symbol of the Rose Cross is also found in certain rituals of appendant bodies to Freemasonry, which require candidates to be Master Masons. Many anti Masonic Christian authors have stated that Rosicrucian Robert Flood (1574–1637) was a Mason. However, there is no evidence supporting this contention. Nor is there any documented evidence to support Arthur Edward Waite's speculation that Flood may have introduced a Rosicrucian influence into Freemasonry. Robert Van Loo states that earlier 17th-century Rosicrucianism had a considerable influence on «Anglo-Saxon» masonry. A list of groups linked to both Freemasonry and Rosicrucianism, which requires for membership admission to be Christian and Master Mason see websites, includes Societas Rosicruciana in Anglia, 1866 Societas Rosicruciana in Civitatibus Fodoratis, 1880 Manly Palmer Hall, a noted occultist and author on Masonic topics, wrote a book called Rosicrucian and Masonic Origins in 1929 long before he ever became a Mason and the Rosicrucian author Max Heindel wrote a book in the 1910s, both of which portray Catholicism and Freemasonry as being two distinct streams in the development of Christianity. Topic. Claims of Satan worship and response Some Christian critics of Freemasonry, often evangelical Christians, claim that Freemasonry involves the worship of Satan. Such claims are often supported by quoting, misquoting, or quoting out of context various individuals, both Masonic and non-Masonic, but not Masonic ritual itself. Below are some of the more common quotations used on the Internet in the attempt to establish the claim that Masons worship Satan, with some notes about them. Wait First conjuration address to Emperor Lucifer. Emperor Lucifer, Master and Prince of Rebellious Spirits, I adjure thee to leave thine abode, in whatever quarter of the world it may be situated and come hither to communicate with me. I command and I conjure thee in the name of the mighty living God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost, to appear without noise and without. This quote is often attributed to Arthur Edward Waite, 33 degrees, on Christian anti-Masonic websites, as if it were an authoritative statement from a high level Mason, but Waite is not identified as a 33rd degree Mason anywhere in the book the quote is taken from. He is described simply as an individual with an interest in the occult. Waite was not a Mason when he wrote this book the book was written and published in 1898, Waite became a Mason in 1902. Additionally, according to the Masonic research document, The Lie of Luciferianism, Waite was never a 33rd degree Mason, he never joined the Scottish Rite. He was, however, a high-level member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a magical order based on an initiated lodge model similar to Freemasonry. Topic. Hall 
I hereby promise the great spirit Lucifer, prince of demons, that each year I will bring unto him a human soul to do with as it may please him, and in return Lucifer promises to bestow upon me the treasures of the earth and fulfill my every desire for the length of my natural life. If I fail to bring him each year the offering specified above, then my own soul shall be forfeit to him. Signed Invocant signs packed with his own blood this passage is from Manly Palmer Hall's The Secret Teachings of All Ages specifically, the chapter, Ceremonial Magic and Sorcery. As with weight, Christian anti-Masons use this quotation as if it were an authoritative statement from a high-level Mason. However, as with weight, Hall is not identified as a 33 degrees Mason anywhere in the book, nor is there a record of his reception of the 33 degrees cited in any readily available source that does not include the above quotation. According to the Grand Lodge of British Columbia and Yukon, Hall was initiated into Freemasonry, but not until 1954, when he was 53 years old. The Secret Teachings of All Ages was published in 1928, when he was only 27. More importantly, the quotation is taken out of context. Hall is not discussing Freemasonry at all, but rather summarizing how a magician would invoke a spirit and giving an example of how a demonic pact might read. Hall was an occultist, and according to one source, was a well-established lecturer on the occult and other esoterica by the age of 20, before he was even eligible to become a Mason. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. This quotation appears in Hall's The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. It appears in Chapter 4, titled, The Fellowcraft, which has nothing to do with the actual Fellowcraft degree. The passage is again taken out of context, and its meaning changes when it is put back into the context of the chapter it comes from. It is part of a larger philosophical discussion which can also be read to imply that the improper use of energies can make the Mason a tool of Satan. Furthermore, even taken out of context, this passage does not refer to worshipping Satan per se. As with the previous quotation from Secret Teachings of All Ages, the book was written well before Hall became a Mason. In his introduction to the book Hall clearly states, At the time I wrote this slender volume, I had just passed my 21st birthday, and my only contact with Freemasonry was through a few books commonly available to the public. Blavatsky Satan, or Lucifer, represents the active, or, as M. Jules Bysak calls it, the centrifugal energy of the universe in a cosmic sense. He is fire, light, life, struggle, effort, thought, consciousness, progress, civilization, liberty, independence. At the same time he is pain, which is the re-action of the pleasure of action, and death, which is the revolution of life—Satan, burning in his own hell, produced by the fury of his own momentum—the expansive disintegration of the nebulae which is to concentrate into new worlds." This quotation is taken from Helena Blavatsky's magnum opus, The Secret Doctrine, and is often presented by anti-Masons as evidence of Satanism on the part of Freemasonry. This passage is quite regularly taken out of its context as Blavatsky makes extensive use of symbols and types in communicating occult doctrine. Furthermore, Blavatsky was not associated with Freemasonry and nor did she ever claim to be. Topic. Pike and Taxel Yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately Adonai is also God. For the eternal law is that there is no light without shade, no beauty without ugliness, no white without black, for the absolute can only exist as two gods, darkness being necessary to light to serve as its foil as the pedestal is necessary to the statue, and the break to the locomotive. Albert Pike is frequently quoted by Christian anti-Masons, often with the quotation taken out of context. However, in this case the statement was not even written by Pike. It was included in a letter which con artist Leo Taxel claimed was from Pike, and was later demonstrated to be a forgery. Topic. Crowley The occultist Alistair Crowley, who called himself the Great Beast 666, 
claimed to be a Freemason, and his association with Freemasonry is one major reason why some conservative Christians see it as an occult organization. According to Martin P. Starr, all of the lodges and organizations Crowley joined and founded were considered irregular. Crowley joined the Anglo Saxon No. 343 Lodge of Paris in 1904. The lodge was under the obedience of the Grande Loge de France, GLDF, which was and still is unrecognized by the United Grand Lodge of England. However, during the First World War certain American Grand Lodges recognized the GLDF, thus allowing Crowley to visit a number of regular Blue Lodges while staying in America. This recognition remained in place to the early 1960s, making Crowley's initiation regular in these jurisdictions far past his death. See also Anti-Freemasonry Topic. Notes and references This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Freemasonry. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. Topic external links Freemasonry and Christianity Was Freemasonry Dechristianized? Anglicanism and Freemasonry.